Have you ever been to the dentist and heard the word amalgam thrown around? Maybe you've even had it in your mouth without realizing it. It's that metallic looking material used in dental fillings. But amalgam isn't just about teeth. It's actually a fascinating combination of chemistry, history, and even controversy. So let's break it down. What exactly is amalgam? Where did it come from? And how is it made right here on History of Simple Things? At its core, an amalgam is a mixture, specifically a blend of mercury with another metal or metals. While that might sound a bit unusual, mercury is one of the only metals that stays liquid at room temperature, and this unique property makes it incredibly useful in forming alloys. When mercury is combined with other metals like silver, tin, copper, or even zinc, the result is a soft, moldable material that eventually hardens. That's perfect for certain applications, especially in dentistry. This is what we call dental amalgam. So why did amalgam become so popular for dental fillings? There are a few solid reasons. First, it's durable. Amalgam fillings can last anywhere from 10 to 15 years, sometimes even longer with proper care. They're strong enough to withstand the forces of chewing which is no small feat considering how much pressure our jaws can apply. Second, it's affordable. Compared to alternatives like composite resins or porcelain fillings, amalgam is relatively cheap to produce and use. This made it especially popular in public health settings or for patients without access to more expensive dental care. And third, it's easy to work with. Dentists can place amalgam quickly, and it sets up reliably in most environments, even if the area isn't completely dry, which is often the case inside a mouth. Now that we know what it is and why it's used, let's talk about how amalgam is made. The process begins with the base metals, usually a powdered alloy of silver, tin, copper, and sometimes zinc. These metals are chosen for their individual properties. Silver gives strength, tin makes the mix easier to manipulate, and copper improves hardness and reduces corrosion. Zinc, when included, helps reduce oxidation during the process. These powdered metals are mixed with liquid mercury. Yes, actual mercury. Now I know what you're thinking, isn't mercury toxic? We'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's understand the chemistry. When the powdered alloy and mercury are combined, they undergo a chemical reaction. The mercury dissolves some of the metal particles and forms a new metallic compound. This reaction produces a putty-like material that can be packed into a prepared cavity in a tooth. As it sets, the amalgam hardens and becomes extremely durable able to hold up to the daily grind of chewing, brushing, and even grinding teeth at night. The actual mixing process can be done manually or using a machine called an amalgamator, which shakes a sealed capsule containing the alloy powder and mercury until the two are thoroughly blended. This ensures consistency and safety, reducing direct contact with mercury. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, mercury. Yes, mercury is toxic in high amounts, especially in its vapor form. That's why mercury thermometers and other consumer products have mostly been phased out. So why is it still being used in dental fillings? Here's the key. When mercury is combined with other metals to make amalgam, it becomes bound meaning it's not in its free, volatile form. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the American Dental Association, and many health organizations around the world have long maintained that dental amalgam is safe for most people. Studies show that the amount of mercury vapor released from fillings is extremely low, well below harmful levels for the vast majority of the population. 
That said, some groups are more sensitive. People with known mercury allergies, pregnant women, or those with kidney issues may be advised to avoid amalgam. And in recent years, there's been a push towards using more mercury-free alternatives, especially as dental technology continues to evolve. But despite the concerns, amalgam remains widely used in many parts of the world, especially in public healthcare systems. Its longevity, affordability, and effectiveness keep it in rotation, even as composite resins and other newer materials gain popularity. As dental technology advances, there's a growing interest in finding alternatives that can match or surpass amalgam in terms of durability, cost effectiveness, and ease of use. Composite resins, ceramics, and even glass ionomer cements are becoming more common as fillings, offering better aesthetic outcomes, especially for visible teeth. These materials don't contain mercury, and often blend more seamlessly with the natural color of teeth. Today, mercury amalgams still find some use in specialized fields, like gold refining and certain types of scientific equipment. But these uses are much more controlled and regulated than they used to be. Back in dentistry, though, the future of amalgam is a bit uncertain. Many countries in the European Union have begun phasing out its use, especially in children and pregnant women. In 2020, the FDA recommended more caution with certain populations, and dental schools increasingly focus on teaching resin-based techniques. So, is amalgam going away for good? Not quite yet, but it's definitely evolving. We're at an interesting crossroads. Balancing a material that's been tried and trusted for nearly two centuries with the growing demand for safer, more aesthetically pleasing, and environmentally responsible alternatives. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.